So we're uh, everybody's back loaded into the all pick, and it's much nicer now that you don't have to burn through a uh, everybody banning out random heroes and grabbing the ones they want as they come up anymore. Since they adjusted the creep spawn in cat tournament version of all pick now, uh, we'll see them have uh, their axe is the last pick. Looks like uh, struggling to find that one there. Now who's this? Should be going live in just a moment. You back with me? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, good to go. And uh, I don't know about the Luna. I haven't seen her played in competitively in a long time. It's a hero I'm a big fan of. So I'm glad to see it. Finally getting a little bit of love there on the cat lady. But, well, one of the cat ladies anyway. Yeah, she's definitely fallen off um, from where she was before. I've heard she's not very good from, you know, like the highest level of play. Um, I've seen her m maybe a few times. Um, it it's going to give them a good security in terms of the late game um i don't know if it really stops any of the heroes but um ready. they're gonna have to definitely choose who they're gonna focus on from rbd yeah and one thing it does though is she fa she can farm very quickly as well as very strong in a tri lane especially when she has somebody to help harass in the ra as far as range goes so she does have that dazzle and that extra lunar blessing damage is very nice but before any of the action kicks off, I'll quickly introduce Red, our RBD. We've got uh, C4T playing the Vengeful Spirit. On the Viper, we've got CYS. Now, on stand-in, we've got Plock playing the Ancient Apparition. For the Shadow Friend, we've got Q, or sorry, HFN QQQQQ playing the Shadow Fiend. Clockwork, last but certainly not least, Limp Osa is going to be on Clock. Couple of DCs coming out. You want to hit the dire? Sure. Well, we're paused right now. We can uh, wait for them to reconnect back into the game. We have Pandemics. We playing the Dazzle. Hodoruz. He's going to be on Earthshaker. Streetlight is the Luna. Sneaks. Queen of Pain and finally Hoff. <laughs> That's a great name for an axe player. Yeah. Playing uh playing the axe. Um, but looks like they get their wards down. Any D ward action going on here? I don't think anyone started with uh, sentries, so not too worried about that. But yeah, we'll we'll, look, we'll see how they want to go. Looks like they're they thought about maybe running aggressive. Axe was sitting pretty far up, but they make a game time decision, decide not to. They're gonna back off. Uh, we'll see how it goes here. Luna's kind of squishy early, but she is very mobile and hits pretty hard, especially when she gets a couple points in Luna Blessing. Clockworks in the area. Goes in with the battery assault, and Luna's gonna eat a couple right clicks, but Dazzle and Earthshaker are there. Clockwork's now in a little bit of trouble. Fissure connects on the wrong side, but the Clockwork taking a lot of damage. The extra damage from Lunar Blessing doing enough. Is it gonna be there? Dazzle's gonna get the first blood going Pan Demex's way. Yeah, it's good that they didn't get the Shadow Fiend as the first blood. Um, so a little bit of uh, silver lining there, but because uh, if you don't want to have a Shadow Fiend starting out with a disadvantage, um, he actually is starting out with a major disadvantage in terms of the creep block. He has to mm -hmm. run all the way down here. Should be able to get a free shadow strike. Yeah, Quop should have a pretty good time up here, and Clockwork is now going to have an awful time in this lane. Luna already getting some CS there as well, and very can easily zone out the Clockwork. Uh, he's fairly tanky. He does have eight tangos, so maybe look to uh, stay alive. But we'll have to wait and see. Only 6.7%. Jeez. Yeah, I mean, she's definitely fallen off in terms of popularity. I'm not exactly sure what it was, but people just don't feel that they're getting enough out of her. I think it's she's she has a very standard build. You can't really deviate for her. You have to go BKB. Like, pretty much every Luna you see, she goes Helm, Yasha, Helm, or she'll pick up her Aquila, then either Drums or straight into the Yasha Helm. And after that, oh, beautiful Fissure Block in the mid lane. FNQQ, he's going to be stuck here. Going to get Shadow Struck as well. Quap going to right-click him down. Hot, taking some damage. Quap blinks forward, and our Shaker goes down, but they're going to get the return kill. So, Sneaks staying alive there. Unfortunately, the Earth Shaker ate two raises and goes down, but probably worth it as it just makes that SF kill worth all the more for the Queen of Pain. Yeah, I mean, it's just going to... Killing him at all just stops him from getting those Necro... Uh, mastery points. Uh, Queen of Pain is also now four versus level three Shadow Fiend, and small things like this are really important in stopping in, in the Shadow Fiend's 
early game. Hmm. He's very uh. He, Jeez. He... Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what I, that's what I'm saying. I mean, they used to be super popular. Everyone liked her because she'd hit so many people, do a ton of damage. Um, but I think now that the game has shifted and things happen a lot faster, I mean, she was really good. She takes about like 20 minutes before she gets going, and people like heroes that they can get going in like the 10 minute range and start doing something. Yeah. Uh, actually, I mean, Eclipse does do a significant amount of damage, except she's just so squishy. She usually just dies anyway. Yeah, she really needs to get that BKB and then have the extra health from a, usually a Mantis style as well before she's feeling comfortable. Sometimes you see drums builds on Luna, go for like the Aquila drums Yasha kind of thing, and you can look to fight pretty early with that. But it's and it's kind of hit and miss. We'll see. She one thing she's still incredibly good at is clearing stacks and crushing buildings. She can take down a set of racks like nobody's business once they get there. Hot's moving forward again, and cool oh, QQ. Lane with fire there, almost gets Fissure blocked again, turns around, throws a right click at the Shaker, and he's actually doing a pretty good job catching up. Has passed the Queen of Pain as far as CS goes, doing a nice job there, and going to get him with a raise as well. So even though he's died once, still holding his own in this lane. Yeah, I mean, she's not doing a whole lot to keep him low on health or, or things like that, and she's not... I don't feel like she's pressing the advantages that she has, especially with some an Earth Shaker sitting mid. Um... So it, a little too passive from the Queen of Pain. Yeah, no, no real Shadow Strike harass coming out here. But oh, as I say that, the first one does fly, and maybe we'll see her look to go aggressive. At level six, she can burst him down quite easily, though. With so a, the thing uh, is, I mean, you have to hit the Shadow Strike and then deal right clicks for it to really hurt. Otherwise, mm -hmm. he's just gonna sit there. He's got a bottle anyway at this point, so even the Shadow Strike damage is just kind of gonna be like, eh, whatever. I'm just gonna CS. Yeah, and he cleans up the creep wave, and they're going to carry on. Regen Rune does spawn top, so maybe they look to go. Quop, she Mid could lane, move forward. She's, she's this, gone. Is the, this is it, yeah, this is it. Oh, Fissure from the Earthshaker, probably helpful. Oh, well, obviously helpful, but probably necessary in order for her to get that kill. And she's going to find a Regen Rune for her troubles as well. So it doesn't even have to lean the, leave the lane. So there it is. It's just a quick, uh, a quick burst, and then he's done. Hmm. That's level three now. Level six. Sorry, level three. Scream of pain now. Level six with the sonic wave can bring him down again when he shows up. We might have to keep an eye on that. Bottom lane is axe. Not getting a whole lot. He's really aggressive right now. I mean, she has her ultimate available. She has full mana, and he is one level lower. Yeah, he's a little bit risky. He's coming out so far. How quickly? Well, we have a chance. Axe having a pretty tough time against this tri lane. A lot of magical damage coming out his way between the chilling touch and then the orb walking from Viper. So I'll also have to watch out for that magic missile. But so far he's been staying alive, soaking some experience. He's level he's level four, almost level five, or halfway through. He's doing better than Clockwork, who's almost level four now, but having a pretty tough time on both off laners. Yeah, I mean Clockwork. Yeah, he's in a little bit of trouble right now, actually. Dazzle. I think, uh, how far can Fissure hit? Fissure can actually hit him if they get vision on him without, um, Birdshaker hitting the, uh... Oh, they're gonna run into each okay. other. Now it's Dazzle, who might be in a little bit of trouble. Unfortunately oh, for so him... Oh, so much damage. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be a dead Dazzle. Doesn't have the Shallow Grave, but now maybe they look to go. Luna diving the tower, thinks about it, but backs off. Has a Lucent Beam, but gonna need a couple right clicks as well. Very fast. That one should be enough, and it is. No proc on the shield, and he goes down. So, I mean, it's good for him to pick up a kill, but um, giving Luna any kills at all is yeah not something you really want to do in the early game. She can snowball. She does have that ability if, if she gets going, but one kill, not enough, but it's certainly the start. Mm -hmm. And they might, they're looking at the Shadow Fiend again. Earthshaker's rotated through. We'll have mana in just a moment. Can throw out a Fissure if he needs to. Pandemic's rotated through. Ha does he have Shallow Grave yet? He does not. But he does have the slow oh. Fissure. Not going to come out. There it is. Unfortunately misses. Does block off the A. Flop throws out the Scream. And drops very low. One more right click. That's actually going to be enough. They turn it around. The Fissure damage not there. Now Pandemic's going to go down as well. And the Courier drops during all of that. Didn't see what brought it down. I just saw that it died on the side. Thought it was a cur thought a courier went down. Yes, it was the radiant courier going down. Did the uh, did the oh, fissure hit lane. or not? Streetlight getting gone on by the clockwork. Can't get off a of losing theme and drops down. Nicely played by 
Liposa. Catch him to Luna there. Didn't even need hookshot. But Fissure did not connect on the Shadow Fiend. It whiffed. Yeah. It was a little wide. That was definitely the uh, nail in the coffin for that team fight. Oh, and wrong side. Yeah, so Shadow Fiend catches up, gets a couple of kills. Now Max Souls, or close enough, only three off. And can you clear up any stacks? Do you have any for him? There is one. Looks like a double stack there. And part, from part of a double stack at each of the uh, strong camps. So he does have some other creeps. He can go clear up and find some farm. Quamp uh, can still rotate around and it's not over yet. She's done fairly well. 39 CS for her, but they're getting eclipsed by the Shadow Fiend now. 46 for him. Viper winning overall, though. He's got 50 and 15. Axe having a tough time. Not able to get a whole lot, but does have his tranks now and some decent levels. This is a good thing about a Radiant uh, Shadow Fiend. You can just go to that big camp or medium camp and uh, start to take it. He's got his friends pulling for him. He'll be able to take that stack. Yeah, he's going to be fine to snowball, even though he died twice. He does have two kills. Mm -hmm. He's going to be off. He's going to be fine. And the, his kill is coming after the death, so keeping up his soul. is going to be able to finish that one off. Probably get... Eh, I don't think he'll get level 10, but he'll get pretty close to it with his stack. Up in the top lane, Luna does have a Bassy and her Helm of Iron Will, so looking for that Helm of the Dominator. Imagine looks to start getting some stacks for her. Maybe look to clean up those Ancients or some uh, jungle stacks as well. She does have one here. Looks like a triple stack. And structures must have been I think fortified. that's the only one. Looks like it. Oh. Yeah, that is. For a second, I thought I actually wanted to kill uh, Ancient Apparition. It looks like he's Ooh, able dazzle. to. Okay. Getting a lot of damage from the tower. That's going to kill him. Oh, he lives with because of the tango. He lived with five health. He's got a TP out. Hasn't skilled Shallow Grave yet. No. Uh, it's a little curious. Probably waiting for it at level 4. Maybe want it to be aggressive with the extra point in the slow, but... Uh, I don't know. A little bit questionable, but we'll see if he can bring it back. I don't remember when he hit level 3. Was he level 3 when he went on... Uh, tried Clock. to go on Clockwork down there? I mean, yeah, he was. Lane. Oh, now QQ gets stunned up. Gonna land one oh. raise. Blink away from the co-op. Nicely done. His raises are on cooldown. They didn't know that. Hookshot's going to land on the Shaker, and now he's going to be in a lot of trouble. Shadow Fiend getting gone on by the Axe. Magic Missile's there. He wants this dunk. Can he get it? No, he can't. The raise. He was halfway through. Clockwork finished off the Shaker, and it's a double kill going the way of RBD. Nicely done from them, and good rotation as a team. Quamp unable to commit to get off that second stream. And looking a little rough here. Yeah, Quamp's having a hard time of dealing the damage before Shadow Fiend turns it around on her. Yeah. And uh, just not, just giving Shadow Fiend a lot of room to to work with here. The <laughs> axe, that was uh, Radiance that Stanley. was really close. Yeah, it was pretty interesting. We do have an ice blast coming up to the top lane. It's gonna connect on both of them. Dazzle's not gonna drop in this, but it's gonna hurt. They get hit with a flare. Uh, it'd be pretty close, but no, nope, they're gonna be okay. No flare coming their way. Oh, they're going to have to back off that tower. The bottom so lane... Go ahead. Shadow Fiend goes Midas. Ooh, going I'm for the Ultra Greed. That. Yeah. He's in a good position for it, I think. Yeah, he's been doing a lot of work just with his spell damage, not really needing any other attack damage items. I don't think anything else worth about 2,000 gold would help him out. Like a Yasha would be nice, but I don't think it would... I don't think it would do a whole lot more for him than just this. Oh, top lane. Clockworks is going to catch the loon again. She does get Eclipse off this time. Getting a lot of beams on the clock, but it's not enough. He goes down. Now it's the Dazzler who might be in trouble. Viper is going to get there. They don't have a way. Oh, they do. The swap's there. But the Ancient Apparition DCs and the auto pause comes out. Pandemix has a moment to think about it, and he's probably thinking, ah, shit. <laughs> he's not going to live through this one. They still have a magic missile available, even though uh, Battery Assault has pretty much just worn off. Yeah, it's a little bit tough. AA does reconnect, and... He has a grave, though. Yeah, we'll see. I don't think he's getting away from this, though. He's gonna try and get the grave off, maybe. There's the Wave of Terror, and no, it doesn't even... Doesn't get it off in time. He goes down. Is it... Oh, mid lane, Quap gets the kill on the AA, so... Something going her way, at least. Yeah, I'm expecting a little... I was expecting a little bit more... Work from her. She's two one and one. That's not terrible, but 
The Shadow Fiend, her opponent is 3 2 and 0 and has way more in terms of the last hits. He's approaching 90 last hits. He's just farming like a monster. Everyone on the side of the radiant has been helping him out. Mm -hmm. uh, and even though he was pressured like 2v1, coming out ahead. Yeah. So, doing very well for himself. As you mentioned, very high oh, on that charge. Eagles. He's going the Sameo build that we've seen become incredibly popular with. Uh, with their DAC and how much Shadow Fiend has been played, looking to delete a hero. But he's doing very well for himself. 7.1k net worth. Next highest is the Viper on his team. Also has a Midas, had it for a while. Sitting at 5.6, and it's the Queen of Pain, 5k, and Luna at 4,700. Yeah, and I mean, who, did uh, Luna just die straight to the... Or is she, like, at half health when she got hooked by Clockwork? Uh, she was underneath the tower. The yeah, problem. that was it. And she went down pretty quick to him. It was tough. There was a lot of creeps in there, but they were all clocks, so just hurt. So we got two Midas Gamings out on the side of RBD. We got uh, one on... Viper's had his for a while, actually. Yeah, he got his in the bottom lane, because he was pretty much left alone down there. Axe in the... I imagine probably going to need to recover in the jungle, but not able to uh, get in there yet. Luna taking a lot of the farm. Does have that helm, and is starting going to look to start stacking the Ancients. Does have a dire range... or sorry, a radiant range creep, but... Poor little guy. Uh, we got the Queen of Pain is probably going to lose her life right here. Venge is able to get this off. We got the Yules. Oh. Oh. Ultimate. Oh, she blinks Not out ultimate. of it. Missed time. Yeah, he did cancel in time. Blinks out just in time. And Quap, very hard hero to do that for. The turn rate, though, almost too much. And uh, she almost went down to it, but nonetheless, going to eat a bit of a raise there. Darfin quickly clears up the creep wave and going to back off. Well, I mean, they didn't even really waste anything for it. I mean, maybe they even expected her to just blink away. Yeah, force her off the lane. And then you can just get some free farm and then go go back and do it again. Mm -hmm. It's not, yeah, nothing was wasted. Shadow Fiend canceled it and AA Blast. I mean, that, that thing's on a 45 second cool, a 40 second cooldown, so it's, it really doesn't matter. Yeah. Top lane tower was taken, though. Luna able to push that down. And, uh,. We'll see when they want to rotate. Venge looking to stack this up as well. Shadow Fiend pretty good at clearing those out with a little bit of help from the Wave of Terror. For sure we'll, uh, we'll see that shortly. But... Yeah, unless I get some kind of bash. Or, uh, I mean, this, just the, the Shadow Fiend is going to be really hard to stop if, if he starts to uh, tank up a bit. Mm -hmm. I think one of the problems with Luna is because of how short range she is, she needs to go... Um, because she's ranged, she wants to go for a lot of these damage items, but because she's so short range, it's almost like she's melee. Only having that 330, they're actually going to spot up the clockwork. No blink on the axe, so can't quite get there. And the axe actually very close to it, is only 200 away from it. Maybe once they get that, that'll be their avenue back. Maybe find some pickoffs as well. They do have a lot of burst, and none of the heroes on the Radiant are too tanky except for that Viper. Yeah, just turning into uh, a game of farm, seeing what item is going to be the one that they decide to uh, go for. Shadow Fiend picking up uh, Blink Dagger. I think he's really the tempo controller, although I expect a little bit out of Viper. Maybe it's the mech that they're waiting for, and then they'll start uh, moving in. But I think just about any hero is liable to be completely picked off mm -hmm. on the side of uh, HSE. And Viper's got the mech on the way, as well as Ancient Apparition has a Midas. So the third Midas coming out for the Radiant. And high self-esteem. They're going to have to find a way to punish these Blink Daggers, punish these pickups, and look to make a go of it. SF pushing the mid lane. Does get the negative weave on him. Axe is going to go and gets the call up as well, but swapped out by the Venge. Now Axe in a terrible position. Going to get set up. A Blast, that's not even going to be needed. They bring him down with a couple raises, and... A less than ideal unveiling of the blank Viper. Maybe a little bit out of position here. Quap gonna go for doesn't land the scream. Sonic wave still up, and they're gonna look to turn around. Quap's gonna blink out. The Luna gonna go. Unfortunately, does not have enough fissures there though. Gets the kill. Clockwork tried for the hook shot. I think he hit Shadow Fiend. SF's gonna go for the Yules. It connects. Luna used to be there. Burst it down, and now QQ is gonna be able to TP away. Yeah, I think the Midas is a really just a uh, confidence choice. They're feeling they, the way that they're playing. They're kind of they're pretty cocky right now. Yeah, and when you can get pickoffs like that in front of the tower, in front of like four heroes, I mean, it's it's I guess it's understandable, but they still have to be a little bit careful. SF can now go towards more traditional items as he's got 
what he needs to uh, insta give people in both the the Yule's ulti. Uh, maybe look for a helm with a dominator or go for that. S or um, sorry, a match of style or whatever he chooses. Body does Yule's does Yule's uh, purge shallow grave? Um, I don't actually know. Yeah, I'm not sure about that one, but uh, if it does, it means Shadow Fiend's free to do that to anyone and not be punished for it pretty much mm. ever. Yeah. Or even if they do Shallow Grace someone, he can just Yules them. It says some buffs on the Yules, so... I don't uh -huh. think it has, because I feel like Yules would be always picked up against a Dazzle in that yeah. case. And I mean, so it's, kind of, it's kind of one of those things, though, unless you have an axe, whether the person's Yules for the... By the time you get there and get the Yules off, if he's Yules for the... The last, you know, two and a half, two seconds of his of the shallow grave, or just kind of sitting there, doesn't it, it doesn't matter a whole lot. Yeah. Either way, you can't finish him off till it's over. Oh, the negative weave going out on the viper. I like to go. They're trying to defend this tier one, but dropping pretty quick. And Luna farming up an ancient stack is going to start getting some farm, but still very far behind this SF snowballing out of control. Yeah, his CS is is pretty crazy right now. Yeah, he's sitting up there, <laughs> ten thousand five hundred net worth, broken that ten that five digit mark, yeah, and gonna keep you back to the mid lane as the rest were rotating in. He's got twenty three hundred gold as well, so whatever he wants to go for next, he does get it. Oh, looking for the co-op, not able to find her. Blink forward, not able to find it. The A blast gonna fly through, not gonna connect with anybody, and Luna's Clops. little minion. Quap forced to go BKB instead of some corner more aggressive item. Yeah, that's tough. She does have it at a pretty decent timing, though, considering she's had a fairly tough game. 18 minutes on the BKB, not terrible. And what she got coming out to her? It's just a roll. Now they're going to look for Roshan. They can take this very easily. SF has almost maxed his presence of the Dark Lord. Eventual Spirit did max Wave of Terror, so they can drop Rosh in a moment's notice, especially with that medallion. Axe really needs to start getting kills. A zero and two Axe at about 20 minutes is not really the best game for him. He wants to get his blink dagger and start to take people out immediately. Yeah, he was hoping for a much more favorable game, and that's kind of one of the problems when you pick Axe like that. They picked him early, and uh, RBD, they had an excellent draft to go pick heroes that Axe doesn't really want to fight against. He doesn't want to get... Moved, pushed around by the cogs. It's tough for him to go in up against the Venge. The swap's going to be there. Viper's pretty tough to deal with as well. And then SF now with the Yules can either Yules him or Yules himself and follow up yeah. as needed. Yeah, I mean, he's really... He's not great in the off lane by himself. He really needs uh, someone else there to help him out. Oh. Against a tri lane, he can get shut down pretty easily. SF could have gone for the axe there, but didn't want to. Instead, he's probably looking for... Maybe somebody a little more important. Trying to find where this Luna is. They're pinging up top. So they got a little more than half the duration on the Invis rune. Gonna just sit here and wait. Maybe find the Earthshaker. There's a lot of people here. Oh, oh, he reveals the smoke. They drop a sentry and he pot channels the LP. Earthshaker almost goes down. The self Yules comes out nicely done. Dodges the scream. Axe goes in. Fortunately, not quite there. They lose their top tower, but they're trying to chase down this SF. Bop links forward, gets the dagger off as well. They slow down by quite a bit. The Luna gets hit with the stun, pops the Eclipse, and they're looking to go. The Death Requiem does a lot of damage. Viper now looks to turn it against the Quap. The physical damage comes out. Beautiful hookshot from Clockwork. Quap able to get out, and they lose their SF, but they get three in exchange. Two cores, and the Dazzle support go in the way of RBD. Beautiful start to that engagement. Yeah, that was a pretty good play from SF. He's playing super cocky, just sitting on the high ground. Pops the ultimate. Yules himself blows their ultimates. Yeah. yeah. Guess what's he happening. did uh, everything he needed to do there, even though he died. It was a very nice play kind of for him. And he, I don't, he didn't even, probably didn't even lose a whole lot of gold as he's had that Midas for a while. He has 1,200 some reliable gold on him. I probably didn't lose too much there. And uh, I did see the Midas come off cooldown as he was walking in the river, so... You know, it's down for probably about a minute or so, so, yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit tough there. It always makes your eye twitch when someone's Midas is off cooldown and they're not using it like this ancient apparition. Come on, buddy. Okay, there it is. <laughs> there we go. Luna now has her BKB. Maybe look to fight, but still not doing a whole lot of uh, right-click there, but starting to tank up a little bit. We'll see. Luna is one of those heroes where you only have to win one fight to get to the base in order to uh, take racks. 
It's not a hero that chips away slowly. She just crushes buildings. And that's it. Axe now tanking the Ancients. Gonna go down. Ray's snagged by the Shadow Fiend. They get the kill. And suddenly there were, well, basically four heroes at the Ancients. The Ancient Apparition there in spirit with the Ice Blast. And uh, ending up creeps in the jungle. Quap trying to push the lane out aggressively. Shadow Fiend cleans up the mid lane. Now maxing and Requiem. Requiem of Souls. Still no it, Roshan. I thought they would have gone for it a little earlier. What with all the minus armor on the Wave of Terror and the uh, Shadow Fiend, Dally, and all that. Yeah, the Ancient Apparition, he's still got a ways to. Does he, or did he just buy his Aghanims? What did he just buy? He's got a point booster. I think he booster. did. Oh, that's it. Okay. Just the point booster. Oh, top lane. Viper's going to get spotted out. They get the slow on him. Echo Slam as well. And Viper's still standing very strong. This is the Shadow Fiend TPing in with his boots of travel. So channeling his ulti and it's going to fly. Unfortunately, not doing a whole lot as the Earthshaker was hit, caught with the uh, oh my God. Grave. But they bring down the Dazzle. Luna drops as well. Viper's still alive. Might live as well. Quap gets one more attack. Blinks out. And now Shadow Fiend's looking to pursue. Gonna get the raise off, and nope. Oh, with the blink away, the negative urn might be enough. The flare's gonna be there. She takes down to the urn, and it's a full five-man wipe going the way of RBD. They only lose their Viper, who somehow throwed all of that, stayed alive for way longer than he should have. Yeah, they just could not, Luna could not deal any damage. She's hitting for, what, 142? 42. Uh, versus, I mean, she's hitting harder than he is, but he's got 16 armor versus her. Well, she still has it too. Decent amount of armor. It's um, just, just too much. Yeah, her attack speed was too slow. Oh, Shadow Feed might be in a bit of an awkward situation here. He's going to take out the ward. Awkward's got a gem. Now, he's probably not too sure what to do. He's got bots, but he can't really get out of there. Axe can cancel it if he wants to. He's going to make it out. Earthshaker tries. Not able to, and he TPs out. Shaker with a decently timed blink compared to some of the other ones we've seen, so maybe look to see. They are going to die this top tower, and they haven't lost Rax yet, but it's not looking great for HSE in this first match. Yeah, saying they having to say, like, well, they haven't lost Rax at 20 minutes is like, yeah, things aren't going so, so hot. So hot. Yeah. We got an ultimate orb now on uh, Shadow Fiend. He still can buy his second one if he's going to go for a Scotty. Probably a Scotty. That'd be my yeah. guess. They'd have no way of getting rid of all that, uh, all that, all that HP. Yeah, and now it looks like they're gonna de they decide that Roshan is theirs. They're gonna move in there. Venge, how much minus armor? 14 minus armor on this Roshan. He's gonna drop very quickly. SF hitting quite hard. So is the Viper. And uh, it looks like they maybe they do they, or they, they don't. They, I don't know if they see. It. They do. They see know it. now. Earthshaker, he can go in. Are they going to? He dies. He snatches the Aegis. What a play killer for Hots. He's going to pay with his life, but he does connect with that. That said, they do get the Clockwork off on the backside. Axe might shatter, though. He gets burned, and he does go down. And they're going to lose their Earthshaker as well. So they got the Clockwork, but they lost... Oh, no, that's their gem. Oh, no, now one's going to get eliminated. Luna does drop. Shadow Fiend. Oh, Dazzle. Oh, boy. He's going to be okay. Stun doesn't connect. Woo! That's close. Oh, what? Dies in the base. I guess the Viper Strike was there. Doing too much damage at max level with an egg. I didn't even see that come out on the Viper. And it's not looking great for HSE. They snake the Aegis, but then they lose four. It's tough. Quap? Not, that's not, you don't want to do that. Yeah, um, I don't know about that uh, oh. blink out of when the Rosh, when Roshan dies. That was a little, a little funny. A little I mean, he's just tougher. being a pain. He's just like yulezing and then blinking away from her and just kind of. Yeah. Oops, he picked up a recipe. Oh, he went for a Lincoln's. That's no, that's what he did. Weird. What will that do? That'll stop, uh... Dagger. Lucid <laughs> Beam. Uh, Poison uh, Touch. I don't know. It might block a Culling Blade. Does it? Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's it. The targeted spell. Kinda... I don't know. Strange item. He's gonna Yule's up the axe. Ulti's still on cooldown, but he's gonna get hit by the Ice Blast, and that's a dead axe. Going down to one more right click from the Viper. But now he's got that bonus armor coming off on him. Grave is on cooldown for a little bit. And this is gonna be tier 3 going down quite quickly. They don't have an Eclipse for 45 seconds. Dazzle 
Uh, it doesn't have weave up for a moment either. Might be tough. Viper Strike's gonna connect on him, and man, that does a lot of damage to poor Dazzle. Yeah, I mean, a level 20 Shadow Fiend versus a level 15 Luna. Yeah. Those, they're just gonna have to uh, regroup and figure oh. out, you know, what they need to do to keep their confidence and get some momentum in the next game. Perhaps deciding on uh, a little bit stronger lanes or something like that. Are they flaming each other? Uh, Vandermex might be a little bit salty with how the game's going, but I don't think it's... <laughs> I, th I think he was more meaning that they having connectivity issues than uh, than anything. But Viper's almost got his Mantis Isle, and by almost, I mean he just has to get it brought out to him. Ancient Apparition almost has his Ice Blast, or his Ags. Again, just has to have it brought out for him. This creator's got to do some work. I don't know if you noticed or not, but Dazzle almost went down to a Viper Strike and a Clockwork Flare. Uh, I didn't see it. Oh, they get a fish off. Ice Blast is coming up top, and it connects on the Queen of Pain. She's going to survive for now. Dazzle's there. Shadow Grave's still on cooldown. But they're going to back off. They get them range racks, and they're going to peace out. Shadow Fiend TPing away as well. And the great thing about an AA ult is that it not only does it force them back, but usually they have to sit and wait until uh, it's it on. wears off in the, in the well. Yeah, so a lot of work there, and the Midas paying off for Plock. That's such a weird name. Plock? Plock. Either way. CYS is C4T. What? I don't know. The uh, On RBD, we have CYS and C4T. I don't know yeah. what that means. No, I have no idea what those mean. Plock. But Plock is the AA. Just weird. Anyways, I don't know why I went off on that tangent, but m moving on. HSE, they've lost one lane of racks, and at this point, it's RBD's game to throw. They have to seriously overcommit on a push, whether it's on a tier 3 and dive under some tier 4s or something like that. We'll have to see. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it'd be pretty hard for them to lose the advantage that they have. It's The experience has got to be what? Like, yeah, it's oh, 20k. Over 20, almost, probably 25 on both experience and gold at this point. Yeah, 30 minutes is very hard to come back from, and they haven't really won a team fight at all. It's 25 and 9. Mm -hmm. um, Luna is just not farming. They're going to find the Viper, though. Axe can go in with a call. He does. The Viper is still standing very strong. Going to get swapped back as well. Dice Blast going to connect. They do dunk the Venge. Now Luna looking to turn it around. Does bring down the Viper. So, so far, it is a 2 for 2, but now Luna is going to drop. Brought down, and Earthshaker takes a lot of damage. Throws out the Echo, but it doesn't matter at this point. Shadow Fiend with a DD rune doing way too much damage. One more hit, and that's going to bring down the Quops. That is going to be game one. Very dominating performance coming out from RBD. Well played, and we'll have to see if HSC can come back in game number two, or if this is going to be a uh, quick series for them. But either way, thoughts on the end of the game? Uh, I mean, it was just out of control at that point, you know. Hopefully yeah. they can just figure out what they need to do to uh, win the laning stage and transition from there. Yeah, and maybe ban the Shadow Fiend. A little bit of respect ban there. For oh my god, do you see his XP friend? per minute on the Shadow Fiend? 101, or, well, I guess no. 101. 1001. Yeah, very impressive performance from him, and we'll be back shortly with game number two.